Rory Aronson es uno de los líderes mundiales que intenta hacer cambios significativos en la vida del resto de los humanos. Con él hablamos sobre FarmBot, una granja robótica que diseñó tanto el hardware como el software y lo pensó como una impresora 3D capaz de acercar la producción de vegetales al fondo de cualquier casa. What is a FarmBot? The FarmBot is like a 3D printer for your food. Uh, but instead of squirting out plastic, uh, the FarmBot plants seeds, it waters, it uses sensors and a camera to monitor how the plants are doing and then uh, make uh, different actions based on uh, what you're growing, where you're growing, what type of soil conditions and environment you're in and uh, set it up with our web application. And then you can control it from your phone, your laptop, uh, an iPad from anywhere in the world, and you can sort of set it up and then forget about it and get a notification when the, when the tomatoes are ready. So the farm bot moves this way and this way, up and down and forward and backwards. And uh, it can pick up the different tools. So this is the, let's see here, the projector. Uh, and these magnetically hook onto the, the tool mount here, uh, and the FarmBot can automatically pick up the right tool for the task at hand. This one is the soil sensor, so it can measure the amount of moisture in the soil, uh, and this little chip right here, the temperature of the soil. This one right here is called the rotary tool, Uh, and it's basically like a miniature weed whacker. Uh, and you can also put a drill bit on here to do uh, drill holes in the soil if you have really hard soil. So, and then this one right here is the, uh, the watering nozzle, so it can sp spray out water from here. So the farm bot can move around and um, take pictures. The camera's right here, and it can uh, scan the garden on a daily basis. Uh, and detect weeds, and then it can go and use the rotary tool to, to weed whack them, it can use the soil sensor to measure the amount of uh, moisture in the soil and then water an appropriate amount. So it's, it's quite customizable and there's a lot you can do with it. We have customers in over 90 countries, but most of the farm bots are in uh, North America, Europe, uh, Australia, uh, Japan, China as well. Our long-term goal is for FarmBot to be like a home appliance. So most people have a washing machine and a dryer if in their home uh, so that they can do laundry and they don't have to do it by hand. Um, and if you have the space and the means, we, we hope that one day FarmBot will be affordable and easy enough for pretty much everybody to have one in their backyard or maybe on their rooftop or in a little greenhouse. And Uh, the FarmBot will sort of work in the background um, and you can just have an app on your phone that uh, helps you manage it and sends you updates when, when vegetables are ready for harvest. Um, and you don't have to necessarily know how to grow all of those different vegetables. The FarmBot will help you with that and it will do that through crowdsourced information from all of the other people who are operating FarmBots. Um, and so that will really open up Um, it will sort of democratize the ability to grow food um, to a lot of people, people who aren't uh, naturally interested in growing food or they don't, they don't consider themselves to be a good gardener. Um, they can use technology to help them. And then it also uh, makes it accessible to people who don't have the time to uh, manage a garden. And so if we can automate all of it and also use the technology to do it better, more efficiently, um, faster, with greater yield, with fewer problems uh, than you would by hand, then uh, it's going to become a no-brainer to use a farm bot at home. Uh, it's open source because we really think, you know, good food should be shared. And uh, by extension, the technology to help create that good food should be shared as well. So we provide uh, a web app server um, that people can use, but you can also run the software on your own server Um, privately, um, and then the hardware is all open source as well. So all of the 3D CAD models uh, you can are available online. You can 3D print components. You can machine them yourself if you have access to that equipment. 
Uh, or you can also purchase a kit from us if you just want something professionally manufactured. And the reason why everything is open source is because we really think that uh, there is no silver bullet in uh, solving the world's food production problems. Uh, we all know that we need to produce a lot more food in the next uh, couple of decades. We do have uh, two different sizes. We have uh, what we call a standard size and the XL models. The standard size is about one and a half meters wide and three meters long. And uh, we estimate that that can produce enough vegetables for one person continuously. Uh, so if you, you know, during the growing season, of course. So if you have the farm bot um, operating to its full capacity, uh, you're utilizing all of the available soil area and even um, vining plants can grow out of the bed and take up a little bit more area. Uh, then we estimate that you can produce enough fresh vegetables for one person. Um, now that's only uh, recommended vegetable content. It's not calories. Uh, to grow enough calories for one person requires a, a very large amount of land. Um, but if you're looking at just fresh vegetables, uh, the farm bot can take care of that. And then our XL model is twice as wide and twice as long. And so we estimate that it can uh, continuously provide the vegetable content for a family of four to five. Uh, I think no matter uh, what, when you bring uh, fresh vegetables grown on site to people, um, you know, very close proximity, uh, I think almost guaranteed those people are going to be eating healthier. Uh, they're going to be more connected to the food, more connected to the environment. Uh, the, the food itself, the vegetables will be fresher and more nutritious. Uh, you'll be able to go out into the backyard and see exactly how it's being grown. Um, you can learn about it through the, through the application and through other users. And uh, by having the food grown uh, sort of under your control and really close to you, you uh, will have more ownership and involvement with the food production system. And I think a, a big problem with, um, uh, with the food production system currently is that most people are very removed from it. You just go to the grocery store and you pick out these processed packaged foods. You don't really see the the farms you don't really see how things are processed you don't have any control over the processes used the chemicals uh and you definitely don't know what the environmental impact is on on that um that was caused by growing and processing and shipping that food so if you can do it in your backyard um you have a pretty good understanding and you're really connected and uh that can that can prompt a lot of people to eat healthier and and um you know, just have better access to all that stuff. Thank you.